Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming miniature video. In this video, we're going to be constructing, putting together, and assembling the U.S. Airborne to meet up with my uh, my niece. Okay, now um, I'm not. This is going to be a multi-part video or, or multiple videos in the construction and painting and everything else of the U.S. Airborne. I am not live streaming this. Uh, I've decided not to live stream. I've decided to put these guys together and paint them and flock them and do all the great stuff with them uh, and edit the video so that you don't have to deal with all the BS that happens in between. Uh, now, I have so I have a Litco base here, a uh, Litco Arrow wooden base, uh, and it just happens to be the exact same size as the included base, you know, 60 millimeters. What I'm going to do is make two medium machine guns, uh, and as you know, in bolt action, uh, light machine guns have a gunner and assistant gunner, and medium machine guns have a, a gunner, assistant gunner, and a third assistant gunner. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these pills and I'm going to make another prone observer. He's going to be basically a guy with uh, binoculars or something, right? So he's going to be part of the medium machine gun team. And then my second medium machine gun team, I'm not going to use these two pills. Okay. The second medium machine gun team, I could put all three figs on the same base. Don't want to do that. I'm going to take a guy, I'm going to put him on one of these round bases. He's going to be kneeling off on the side, uh, and he'll be part of that medium machine gun team. All right, so let me go ahead and get these bases cut out and be right back. Okay, now that i got all the bases cut out, um, as you know, they, they almost always have a little bit of these sprue... Uh, sprue. I'm, even though I'm using clippers, it's never perfectly straight or perfectly flush. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to drag my blade across the bases to clean them up. And once I'm done, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I went through Easy Army, and I kind of designed my force, and I try to figure out exactly how I want to take these 30 models and split them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two uh, bases. I'm going to do the medium machine guns, as you already know, two prone and kneeling guy with extra ammo cane and stuff like that. So that basically is going to make that a medium machine gun team. Then I'm going to have a forward observer. It could be artillery or, or uh, air, just whatever you want during the scenario. Or it could be anything. Just some guy laying down prone with binoculars. Then I'm going to take uh, an observer for a sniper team. He's going to also have binoculars. And that's going to be my sniper team. So I'm going to make sure this guy is kneeling and in a firing position with his uh, rifle. Hopefully I've got a Springfield. If I don't, I'll be using a Garand. Um, and then if I later down the road actually get a Springfield armed guy, I can swap him out and just put this guy in one of my squads. Uh, this guy's just going to be a guy. I don't think he's going to be a medic or anything. He's just going to be an extra soldier I'm going to put out there. But I'm going to have two officers. I'm going to have a lieutenant and probably a captain or major. And then these are my three squads, right? I'm going to have three NCO, you know, uh, one NCO, one BAR, and four riflemen in every squad. All right, so let me go ahead and start figuring out the bodies and the legs and all that stuff, and then I'll be back in just, just a minute. All right, guys, well, we've got the guys glued together. Now, I'll, no, I'm not 100%, okay? Let me back that up. These are not 100%. I have their arms, their weapons, and their heads glued to the torsos. The torsos are glued down to the bases, okay? 
Something I noticed before we move on to gluing on some accessories. Things I've noticed. The arms don't want, a lot of the arms don't pair up or match with the torso. Okay, so I'm going to bring that up just so you can kind of see that a little bit. You see how that arm, there's a gap in that arm right there. Um, I don't know if it's focused very well. Yeah, right here you can see how this arm doesn't pair up. I just want to show some of the other models. Single arms, right? Not, whoops, not a problem at all. Very flush, very beautiful. But when you go to a guy that's got a weapon in his hands, right, and you have to match it up with another hand, what winds up happening is you get a gap on one or the other, and if, and if you don't get a gap on one, the gap on the other one is going to be huge. I've even gone through with my X-Acto knife and trimmed some of the arms and torsos so that it wouldn't be so bad, right? Okay, so then I thought, you know, if I just glue the arm, one arm on, then I can glue the second arm on and make it fit or whatever, right? Well, that's not a very good way to do it, I found. Like this right arm, you can see there's a gap there. And then, but I glued it on, and then I went to glue the other, and, then it, and this arm has the rifle molded with it. So then I went to go glue the other hand to the barrel and the arm to the torso, and look at that. Uh, how do I get there? From right there. Look at that arm. It's like, whoa. It's like my camera, my model. There we go. It's like a super huge gap. I mean, there are a number of them that are like that. And I'm going to say this. I'm disappointed that the arms don't match up as good as the Germans did. Okay, now having said that, I've got my Tamiya putty, and I've got my handy dandy applicator tool, and I've got my thick super glue, and what I'm gonna do is, ooh, wait, hold on, what's going on here? Boop. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pull all these models out, and I am going to touch up all of their arm joints because I am rather disgusted with it. All right, so let me go ahead and do that, and I will be back, and you will check it out. All right, so now I've got the I've got the um, putty filled in on all my models here, and you can see I've got a lot on my finger. But no, I um, it's not completely dry because you know how I put the Tamiya putty on. I don't know if you know how I do this, but I put a drop of super glue and then I go to put the Tamiya putty on there. And what the glue does is it melts the putty down inside all the cracks. And then I just use my finger here as a as a smoothing tool to lay it and press it down inside all the cracks and to make it a smooth uh, transition. Okay, so I've done those. Now what I'm planning to do is add the backpacks, the entrenching tools. Actually, I, I'm going to call them Uzet bags. The entrenching tools and uh, and then the ammo pouches I'll do afterwards. Okay, so right now we're just going to go ahead and cut out all the Uzet bags and glue them on. All right, so let me go ahead and get those glued on, and I will be right back. All right, guys, now as I'm going along, as you might already know, I'm going to do, uh, when I hit certain thresholds or waypoints or whatever I want to call them, as soon as I hit certain checkpoints along my production of these figures, I want to stop for a second and just kind of highlight what I've done so far and then go back to construct them. Okay, so... Uh, just so you know what this platoon's composition is, we've got two light machine gun teams. Uh, I, I back up. 
I got two medium machine gun teams, uh, three figures each, right? And then I've got uh, I've got an FO. I've got a sniper team. I've got a medic. I've got a headquarters element captain uh, here, and then I've got a lieutenant there. Uh, then I got three squads of six with uh, NCO with Thompson, BARs, riflemen, and that's how I've set them up so far. Uh, I might have already said that a million times. Okay, if you know, I've talked about the gaps. Well, I went ahead and I puttied them. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to see how the putty has resolved some of my issues with their uh, arms having gaps. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna see once I uh, this is a pretty good one to see in his underarm all right in there yeah you can't really see those gaps anymore and once you once I go to paint these all uh, that putty will it, those gaps will really be disguised I mean because right now you can kind of see where the putty was or is on the model and it kind of uh, is is uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for it's kind of revealing right now because it's not painted uh, but as I did as I said I was going to do um, a couple of my assistant gunners for the machine gun teams I put ammo boxes on their bases okay this one's a closed ammo box like I mentioned I would do right and then I left one of the ammo boxes open just because I didn't want to I didn't want to lose that uh, machine gunny ammo box looking effect so I left that open uh, now they're packs right I put uh, their musette bags with their entrenching tools and their GP bag and then this guy's a BAR so I've actually given him the BAR ammo pouches right there on his belt uh, and that's how I did most of these guys I've, they've got their entrenching tool GP bag musette bag but also like on the submachine gun the NCOs I gave them two packs two sets of magazine pouches right so you got one on each thigh Right, um, and then the lieutenant and the captain, I each just gave them one. Right? But I also gave the officers uh, the 1911 in holster. Uh, one of the officers, I put it on his, gave him a shoulder holster. Basically, it's over his, or on his neck. The medic, as you know, he's got his pistol out. So what I did was, as promised, I took the holster and I trimmed off the little handle and I trimmed off the tip so it looks now like an empty holster. Uh, I still have plans for my FO just because this base is so enormous. Uh, I still have plans for this FO. I'm planning on taking one of these rifles that has a hand on it and trimming off the hand, and trimming off the arm, basically, so that, uh, and basically just doing a little bit of modeling, hopefully, on the rifle. I'll lay it down on the base somewhere next to the FO so it'll look like he had a weapon. He's just not, well, just not using it or whatever. I could always give him, well, I don't know what I could give him, but I think I'm thinking I'm going to put a rifle or something, maybe a carbon or whatever the rifle was that I can use. I'm going to lay it on the base next to him. Okay, uh, but pretty much everybody else uh, still still needs some additional pieces. Uh, what are some of the other pieces we're going to use today? Well, we're going to well. 
before I cut you off. I'm gonna I'm gonna add I have five of these little can you see that? No, right here on this side. I've got five of these little grenade clusters. Uh, so five guys are going to have grenades, right? Um, I've got two knives on every one of my sprues, so that's ten knives. Uh, now, when I was putting the backpacks on, I noticed... Okay, so half of the backpacks with musette bags, half of them have... I'm showing you the back here. Half of them have... A bayonet already so I already have 15 of those with bayonet with with uh, with knives I just got to locate them and some of the ones that don't have knives are the ones that are gonna get that bayonet so really that'll get me a total of 25 with knives and that means five of them are not gonna have knives um, I don't know who I'm gonna give that's not gonna have a knife well, the FO is probably going to be one that's not going to have a knife. Um, I think I'm going to give a knife to the medic, believe it or not. But he's probably going to not have a knife. And then I want to give knives to the everybody. Uh, I might not give a knife to the assistant gunners because their legs are in a position where you wouldn't see the knife anyway. So that's a possibility. Okay, what else is on here that I need to use? Uh, so, oh, the ba the med medical pouches. Okay, right here you got four different medical pouches on this end. So you got that guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Uh, those are all going to be mounted onto helmets. So with five of them, that's 20 pouches. Well, yeah, it's 20 pouches. So 20 people with, with netted helmets are going to get ammo uh, medical pouches. Uh, last thing, you got the bandoliers, right? The bandoliers, uh, they're going to go on chests, and I'm going to, and I've only got one of these per sprue and one of these per sprue, so I'm just going to put them on randomly uh, on my rifleman. All right, so uh, once I get all those mounted, I'll be back to show you those. All. I'll be right back. So, all right, guys, all right, here we go. We've got it completely 100% glued together. Um, now all I need to do is maybe grip the bases and then prime them and paint them, but uh, basically go through the painting process. But let's go ahead and take a look at the individual models uh, before I end this video. And then on the follow-up video, we'll go ahead and paint these up. Okay, so it'll be like a it'll be like a daily update. <laughs> All right, so let's start with my machine gun teams, and hopefully, I think these are pretty good in focus. Uh, we've got your M1919 machine gun on bipod, but that's an airborne version of it. This is the M1919 with the buttstock. Uh, there's a lot of M1919s that have handles, and they stop right there. They don't have the full buttstock. Well, these do have the full buttstock. So just just tidbit of fact. Okay, now also on the so you see they've got their uh, most of them. I'm gonna say there's a few of them that don't have it, but 90% of them have a, or I should say 20 of them have a um, first aid pouch on their forehead. Or side of their helmet. Uh, you got the musette bags, ammo pouches, entrenching tools. Uh, none of these guys, I didn't put the knife on any of these guys, and I've given him a holster. Okay. Uh, yeah, and these guys pretty much exactly the same. Okay, I just pretty much doubled them up. Okay. Now, when you go in, t when you're talking about our NCOs here, uh, they also have the backpacks on. They've got you. Well, I give them all Thompsons, and I give them the two ammo pouches. And this guy has a grenade, a couple of grenades on his shoulder webbing. 
as well as I gave him a knife on his leg. Okay, so, and the screaming, he's like screaming, ah, okay, so that's just one NCO, I'm going to show you the other ones. They all pretty much uh, duplicated what I put on them, so you're going to see a blade, the full kit, he's, he's firing his Thompson, and he's basically got it all, okay. This guy's holding his Thompson a little lower, also screaming, and uh, he's got his knife and a kit. Okay. All right, BARs. Uh, the BARs, I think, yep, all three of them I gave the uh, knife as well as the full kit. And then they've got the BAR ammo pouches right there. Uh, they're all the same. And then you go to some of the riflemen. Like this rifleman does not have the first aid pouch. And he doesn't have a bayonet on his leg because there's a knife right there on his uh, kit. Okay, so, you know, it's a little variation. This is a guy with a med pack, but no bayonet, no knife, no trench knife or anything. Uh, this guy is uh, also, I'm just using the running guys. This guy's running as well, but I did throw a knife. Whoa, I almost dropped that guy. Threw a knife on his leg right there. Okay. Um guy cradling his M1 Garand and open hand and I gave him crossed ammo web ammo bandoliers and a knife so he's really loaded down that might be why he's cradling his weapon uh, let's see another unique guy uh, okay the FO the guy I'm making my FO, I gave him a rifle slung. Now this is a rifle that had an arm underneath it. I just chopped the arm off. Uh, I think, I don't know, I don't know if I have an extra arm that I could show you what I chopped, but I can show you the arm that I chopped off. I chopped off that arm came off of that rifle so then I just glued it on to him uh, did not give him a bayonet or anything like that just gave him the ammo gave him the the the, the, the double the two-piece musette musette and entrenching tool now I'm planning and he's got a, uh, a no webbing on his helmet so I didn't give him any ammo pouches because he's gonna be an officer and then you know he's gonna be a Ford observer but I'm gonna put some rubble, raised rubble, maybe a wall or maybe some bricks or something on his base so it'll look like, it'll make it, turn it into a little diorama. I'm planning on doing that with this guy and probably my machine guns as well. Okay, this guy's going to be the medic so I'm going to have to use the medic uh, red cross on his helmet. That's why I didn't uh, give him the net because I wanted it to really stand out. And uh, he's the one I gave the pistol and the pistol, the holster. Um, that's it for him. Okay, now my sniper team that I've got right here, I've got a guy with a binoculars out, and he's ready to spot for his sniper. Uh, he has the kit, and I did not give them a knife. Now, I was, I was thinking about putting, I almost put a med pouch on this guy's helmet, and right as I was getting ready to do that, I realized... That'd be, that'd be a waste, because I don't have a full 30. I need to sp spread them out anyway. So I said, I was planning on putting camouflage uh, on both of these helmets. And when I do that, I, I'd be covering up the, the med pouch. So it's almost like a waste. So I didn't bother putting it on 
these two helmets. And I've got this guy kneeling and shooting. I thought about making a, a prone guy, one of my prone guys, uh, the sniper team, but uh, then his assistant would still be kneeling because I wouldn't have had enough prone at that point. Okay, now here's my lieutenant. Uh, I did not give him a knife as well, but I did give the officers grenades uh, and one ammo pouch for this Thompson. Okay, I don't know if you can see. I think I put his grenades right there. Okay, and then the first lieutenant, this is the, this is the main guy, my force leader, if you want to call him that. He's pointing because he's in charge, and he's got the one ammo pouch. He's got a couple of grenades up here. Uh, he's got a, a holster for his pistol right there. Yeah, that's what I set up on this guy. Uh, the officers, I did not put the netting on their helmets because I plan to use the decals and the paint for their rank. All right, so tomorrow I'll come back and I will, before I start filming, I will already have put grit on them and primed them and we'll start the painting process. All right, so I'll catch you tomorrow.